Hey guys, welcome to this episode of the Friendly Banters. Uh, this is the episode we have been waiting for a long time. This is the debate about the farm bills which we had presented to you, all the facts and figures. So ultimately, we are here with the debate. So let us introduce our panelists first. So our first panelist is an old friend of mine who has been very active in the Orissa quizzing circuit and is a very politically opinionated guy, Mr. Rohan Rakesh. Yeah. Hello all, thanks for inviting me. Really looking forward to this debate, especially given the topic. And well, I hope this will be a blast. Not that public blast. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> right, Rohan. Uh, so we'll introduce our second panelist. He is one of the stalwarts of Kit MUN Society. If you have been MUN, you would be knowing this guy. His name is Mr. Manish Sharmawats. Yeah, Vishak, uh, first of all, thank you for inviting me for such a wonderful concert and kudos to this concert uh, for bringing all the like-minded people you know, together instead of fighting, having a fruitful debate. So, thank you. Amazing. Amazing. Thanks, Manish. The third panelist is another stalwart from the same MUN Society, Mr. Divakar Upadhyay. Hey, guys. Uh, once again, thank you for inviting me here. And a really great concept and uh, very looking forward for the fruitful debate. Thank you. Thanks, Divaka. Thanks so much for joining us. And the last but not the least, if you have been in NMUN, you must have seen this guy anywhere doing the judging, doing, being the participant, Mr. Swami Abbasu. He has been one of those guys who has been uh, looking into the world political scenario and Indian political scenario quite, quite keenly. So let's welcome him. Well, um, thanks guys for inviting me. I do believe that this is a wonderful platform and a wonderful in initiative launched by Abhishek and Aman. Um, one of my, like, both of them have been my friends for a very long time. And they are having this esteemed, almost 75% MUNing <laughs> panelist again to have this debate. It's very nice. So yeah, let's, let's, let's get it on. Let's discuss some. Right, right. So Amir, thank you so much. Now that we have got our, all our panelists here up and running for this debate, uh, let, us, uh, let us go ahead and understand what are the rules of this debate. We'll try to keep this debate as civil as possible, as rational as possible. We do not want to go Republic. Aman, over to you. So let us start with the rules of the debate. So uh, we'll try to make this debate as civil as possible. Let us try to stick to English and Hindi because most of our audience belong to that vernacular background. So the first round will be an opening statement round where every panelist will get two minutes to make their opening statements. Once they are done with opening statements, then we'll move on to the bills. Abhishek, can you explain that to them? Yeah. So basically we have got three bills. You can give your uh, stances on the bills in your opening statements if you want to. Then we have got three bills. We'll try to focus in each and every bill. We'll try to understand what your perspectives are. So each and every one of you will be given three minutes uh, to speak on the bill. What are your stances on the bill? What, what are the loopholes you find in the bill? And what are the good things that you find in the bill? So you will be given three minutes of window. And uh, then there will be a rebuttal session that Aman will tell you. So after everyone has everyone is done with three, three minutes of explaining their stance, we'll open the floor for another three minutes in which anyone can ask a question to anyone. This will happen for all the bills. Once that is done, then we'll move on to the final round, which is the closing statement round, where everyone will get another two minutes to make a closing closing statement to their points. So right. this, by this, we'll come to an end of this debate. Right. About the timekeeping, what we'll do is uh, you will be given whenever you are you are given a time window of say two minutes or three minutes, uh, you will be given a warning call at the second minute if you are in a three minute window. Then the second warning call at a two and a half minutes. And the final final warning call and the final call on on the third minute, and then you will be given an extra ten seconds to wrap it up. And if you don't wrap it up, you will be muted up, and people, the other person in the panel will be given the chance. About the rebuttal, uh, when there will be uh, there will be a three minute window for each and every session. So uh, whoever wants to ask a question can raise their hand, and uh, we'll give that person that question uh, to ask, and that person the question to ask direct directed to the person who wants to ask the question. And once that person is done, uh, we will uh, will ask the person to whom the question is directed to answer it or in whatever his points are. 
there will be no second rebuttals and you as you cannot ask another question until and unless it's it's absolutely a uh, bizarre point or you want to you know pester that person it will be the, on the discretion of the of the organizers the moderators so uh, guys i hope the rules are clear uh, for all of you uh, yeah they do for me yeah that's that's really cool okay somya yeah very simple very simple yeah so manish civil and logical sorry rohan yeah as far as we are allowed to say something i think that's oh, enough in today's world <laughs> for a debate <laughs> makes sense makes sense thank you so much thank you so much so guys uh, so i uh, abhishek majumdar and uh, my uh, esteemed colleague aman will be your moderator today uh, basically guys i hope that you uh, you guys have your pens and pencils with you because you need to write a lot of points today and uh, for the opening statements we'll open the floor today for all of you your uh, mr manish sharma was is the first panelist who is going uh, uh, for his stances and <clears throat> you can go now yeah thanks abhishek uh, so so we are talking about the three bills and their benefits and their loopholes so the bills uh, they started uh, to so these bills are basically started to increase the growth in all the sectors such as investments in public and private sectors to build infrastructure global and national markets and supply chains for the farm production so the government has tried to help out the small scale farmers who did not know the procedure to bargain crop products to get a better price and uh, not to have a means to invest in technology for growing farm crops so basically through this agricultural bill all state would lose their uh, mandi fees and commission which was basically from the farmers pocket every contract farming allows the farmers to work on a contract basis on a large retailer for previously agreed crop price so uh, like before jumping into the advantage and the loops also they three each bill let us understand uh, history of uh, like history of the uh, agricultural farming in india So after 1947, the zamindari system was abolished. The farmers were converted into small agricultural land, and the farmers became the owners of this land. So, uh, so were they allowed to sell their crops to uh, uh, big businessmen or the retailers? No. The, those sahukars or the people who were in charge, they took the advantage of these poor farmers, gave them loans, and took their harvest in much cheaper price. So, uh, so after the Green Revolution in 1916s, the APMC pitched in. Oh, sorry, is the time up? Or? No, no, no. Go ahead. Okay. So the APMC pitched in, uh, which was a revolutionary bill or a system, you may call it. Uh, so what what it did is like instead of selling it to the sahukars or the zamindars, uh, it gave them a mandi system in which uh, the auction of their crops would be uh, uh, auction of their crops would happen. So basically, uh, from the previous system, the APMCs were uh, much relief to all the farmers. Uh, but now let us understand that these AB systems are still valid today or still valid at that time. The answer is no. Manish. Okay. Manish, yeah. there are ten, there is ten seconds. You can wrap it up. Okay. Cool. So uh, my closing statement is uh, that be it today, be it ten uh, years back, be it fifty years back, far farmers does not have their uh, uh, freedom to decide their crop prices, and they are still uh, price takers and not price makers. Makes sense, Manish. Makes sense. Uh, very well written. Very well portrayed. Uh, points. Very valuable points. Yeah, very valuable points. Uh, I guess these points can be built upon by our fellow panelists. So I request the next next panelist in line, Mr. Rohan, to make his opening statements. Okay. Thanks for the opportunity, guys. So, my I would start by saying all the bills which have been passed. in no way they can be seen in isolation like each of the this you, you can't see each of the this in isolation government has been pretty clear in its intent to remove the middleman from the entire pricing system now what effects and what are the things that would take place we will discuss it further but from government side with all three bills in the picture there has been a con constant and clear approach saying we will abolish the middleman now talking about middlemen the the direct relation comes with apmcs now we are not in a position to abolish apmc what government stands is okay they wanted but 
the truth remains we are not in a position to do that and at the same time we are not in a position to hand over everything to corporates so now where does it leave and what is the entire situation and that's because and that is the reason the entire situation has been a quagmire so this 1976 system uh, uh, where, where apmcs were established and apmcs started uh, coming into foray and doing all this yes there there is a clear case for that farmers rights and farmers have haven't been the price setters and all but apmcs have done their job yes they 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 are taking the commission on and all the middleman aspect is there but the kind of support it apmcs have been providing to the farmers i'm afraid to say even the central government hasn't been doing that till now or they haven't done that now coming to this bill now if if government says our intent is to abolish the middleman then what are their alternatives so we will take care of the thing and we will look into this after this one so my closing statement i will uh, conclude this by saying it looks pretty good on paper but uh, let's see how it pans out amazing statement thank you rohan statements rohan uh, it was pretty interesting statements he has made shots are have already been fired as an apmc have done their job and central government mm -hmm. have not done uh things look good on paper and uh, not practically uh, having said that uh, we'll go to our next panelist mr divakar upadhyay uh divakar you have got 2 minutes uh and make them count okay so like as uh, stated uh, previously by banish and rohan uh, like uh, i would i will uh, more of more or less take this as a whole bill into uh, into account rather than uh, you know speaking uh, for three different at same point because i think before passing these bills we must look at the much more perspective of uh, the government that is self reliant india and we can only build a self reliant india when every person in itself is a reliant person and i guess what uh, the government has trying uh, government is trying or has been trying from the past few years is to make the person who is uh, who is at the very basic level of uh, their uh, of this country to make empower to empower them or to give them more power to the uh, not only to themselves but also to, uh, to the market so i guess uh, by uh, by propo proposing this bill uh, and uh, making this an act uh, uh, i think the farmers will be getting more power to the market because uh, see the first thing that i see in this bill is like the, they get to choose the price and they get to choose whatever they want to uh, produce from their fields so this makes uh, this makes this bill or this amendment very important for not only for the farmers but also to the consumers and also to the people who are in trade of these things because you know when uh, for example if if being a farmer i am i i want to produce something uh, and it cost me x amount of money and uh, so i must uh, there must be amount uh, there must be a amount that i should be profited profited to before selling that before selling that to someone okay so now when i am uh, when i am allowed to get a price of my own i will be benefited by it and so i think this bill will not only help the farmers grow their uh, uh, grow their self but also help them uh, in increasing their you know uh, increasing their uh, livelihood and help not only help them but also help the traders that are in this in, in this sec sector Devakar, you have completed your statements within two minutes, and that's a feat. Thanks. Uh, absolutely, absolutely amazing statements. Uh, well, well, well uh, researched, well furnished. Uh, uh, Devakar's main points are that the farmers will be getting empowered, market will be getting empowered, consumers will be benefiting a lot from the bills. So, pretty good points. Uh, having said that, I will go to our next panelist, Mr. Samia Basu. Basu, you have. got two minutes make them count go yep um, thanks guys uh, so i'll very first begin off right at uh, the topic that is will the bills improve the farmers lives or will it turn out to provide no significant boost unfortunately this particular topic does not even say will these bills make their lives worse so this is the very first point that i would start off with that forget the significant boost these bills will definitely make the lives of the farmer farmers worse off and how is it worse worse off so let's say it um, at this very beginning 
and uh, divakar said that uh, it's 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 about uh, the insightful india but when we talk about india in itself i can right away name four different climatic zones that is temperate arid semi dry and tropical climates which exist within the geographical region of india and having three uh, having one uh, uniform act to connect the entire farming produce of india is absolutely ridiculous that being said there are certain conditions within the bills which are definitely favorable for the farmers like markets and like uh, the bargaining power of the farmers but here is where my biggest point comes into play that 80% of the farmers more than 80% of the farmers of india hold less than 2 hectares of land which is definitely going to be counted as small farmers who are definitely and at each and every point of time going to be trumped by the bigger farmers who are just 15% in number but their produce account for more than 60% of the total produce that are consumed by us and in short uh, uh the entire supply chain issue can be looked at in a very separate way but basically the farmers who are who, uh, whose, whose lives are at stake here one sim- simple bill cannot improve it cannot but but will always degrade it so yeah as we have got 10 seconds <laughs> Yeah, that's it. Okay. Wonderful points. Wonderful. Uh, so name calling has already started with Devakar. Uh, Devakar had pointed out that we would get we would get an insightful India. Basu, with his uh, environmental research and knowledge, has pointed out some geographical facts and figures, which which uh, seems to be logical. Uh, Basu says that there cannot be one particular farming act for the. for the entire nation the entire diversity of the country because of the different temperate zones temperature zones and different geographical locations of uh, uh, india which is quite diverse so uh, all these points make sense i hope our all our panelists have taken their points uh, uh, and made their notes uh, having said that uh, with our opening statements uh, done uh, we do understand what is the stand stance of our panelists so we have got three farm bills as we all know so what we'll do is we'll give you guys a minute to discuss among yourselves which bill you are going to pick it up uh, pick pick up for the first discussion so i would so i think let's start with the trade and commerce bill because uh, like it's a, it's a, it's a relatively more important bill and we can go ahead with the same flow i guess yeah. i agree so we'll we'll start this uh, debate in an anti clockwise way as in uh, the first in last round was manish so this time we'll give Uh, Basu as the first speaker on the dais uh, will will ask Basu to start with his with his statement so Basu uh, you have got 3 minutes on the clock you make them count your time starts now no okay. thank you so essentially on the farm produce trade and commerce act i have two points so my arguments against the uh, agricultural produce trade and commerce act uh, act because the president has signed it is going to be mainly focused on two points and i'm slowly going to move into the points one by one but before we can move into the points let's face some very basic facts that what happens presently so presently the farmers big and small they both uh, they, they both go to uh, to a to a place on monday Or, or an APMC, which is the Agricultural Produce Marketing Committee, where they go and sell their products. Now, their products are sold on the basis of something called a minimum selling price, an MSP, which is again auctioned by the state government uh, before it can be sold per year. So this auction price comes up per year. Now, here's the problem. Uh, people say that this auctioning does not give the farmers the power of bargaining. but i would say that the power of bargaining is mainly done by somebody who controls the supply so this is my first point that supply side consideration is absolutely being undermined here because let's say if there is a big farmer who can produce 100 tons of potatoes in one particular year and there's a small farmer who can produce maximum 5 tons of potatoes who do you think will always contain will control the bargaining price it will always be the big farmer how many small farmers would it be needed to produce the same amount of produce that the big farmer would produce 20 small farmers will be needed in my example 
So it, which means that the twenty-first person is controlling the bargaining for the other twenty people, and the other twenty people will have no say. Why? Because it is a free market. Now there has been a, a a recommendation here by the government that the government is not removing the MSP. Of course, the government is not removing the MSP because the APMC is not being removed here. Does that mean that the APMC will not be abolished? It will definitely be abolished. Why? Because again, it comes down to the fact that the person who is controlling the supply for the demand that is being made. And always control the market. That is normally how a market works. It's a simple demand and supply curve we have all all learned at some point of time in our lives. That's the essential thing. So, the, it, it 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 essentially what happens here is that if uh, two or three big farmers can get together and control their produce and control the bargaining price, what becomes? It becomes an oligopoly. and the ultimate form of an oligopoly is something called a cartel so the private market will essentially become a cartel in india and by cartel i do not mean mexican drug cartels cartel is any 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 in any place where a certain number of people control the entire market that is essentially what is going to happen and the second thing i have one point if i exceed by uh, by 20 seconds please do excuse me the second thing is that central government has not paid the state government their gst revenues and this is exactly where it comes into play that the gst revenues that are connect, uh, collected from the apmc and the mandis directly go to the state government uh, when the farmers sell there when the amount of produce that will be sold less and less the state government automatically loses out on their gst automatically lo loses out on the revenue yeah, because so five seconds tax, tax. because it's a four person tax and as you know a private market cannot have tax so that is the essential thing the state governments will lose out their revenue and final point the government is its inability to pay the state government is actually forcing this particular act to go through to both the parliaments yeah right so a lot of points uh, first uh, very well detailed yeah a lot of points very well detailed a lot of uh, a lot of points which have been made which are basically contradict contradictory of A lot of points made in the first because uh, Basu pointed out of the oligopoly of the cartelization. The government says with this act, the government is trying to remove the cartelization of the private markets. Uh, let's see what our other debaters uh, have in 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 their store uh, to counter these points, or do they agree with the points of Mr. Samia Basu? So the next person in Pandey Dais will be Mr. Deepa Devakar Upadhyay. So Devakar, uh, you have got three minutes on the clock. I'll give you twenty seconds extra because ba Basu has uh, had exceeded her twenty seconds extra. So just just before we start, uh, can you hear hear me properly? Yeah, right? absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. okay, that's good. right. So, um, uh, Mr. Devakar, uh, uh, you have got third three minutes on the clock. Make it count. Your time starts now. No. Okay. So, uh, like. Uh, as i have uh, again uh, i have stated in my, in the beginning that uh, this bill is the constituent of three different um, uh, three different uh, what uh, i will say three different uh, uh, policies that have been already uh, uh, introduced into the system by the ruling government now the thing is that we need to understand here is uh, with the help of uh, the farmers produce trade and commerce bill uh, rather i would say because it has been now amended into an act it will uh, help the fa uh, farmers to you know uh, reduce the monopoly of these middlemen in the market because you know farmers now this uh, with this bill uh, the farmers have been given the power to sell their products not only in the apmcs but also outside the apmcs now as my uh, previous speaker mr basu have uh, have stated that uh, Uh, like apmc will be abolished or uh, you know there are four different climate zones in india itself so i uh, like uh, see this 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 is the whole point of this like when uh, when a person can uh, sell their own products outside of their state now let's say that uh, there is a drought in uh, Uh, let's say uh, uh, Rajasthan. Okay, and uh, now when there is a drought in Rajasthan and UP have the product, so we can sell uh, we can sell, sell that product from UP to Rajasthan, and then uh, the drought affected Rajasthan will be easily helped. 
now uh, the previous policies didn't allowed us the previous uh, policies had lots of tax imposed on the same thing so now the same person have to pay taxes to move his own product from uh, the from their part of town to other part of town now see uh, when we say of a combined india these restrictions shouldn't be there so i guess the what government has tried to implement here is a free uh, a free not restricted trade okay this will uh, how it will help the farmers it is like uh, the farmers will be allowed to sell outside their uh, comfort zone this will help uh, this will help the uh, the, the, the like uh, wherever they are selling or they are buying the new infrastructures will be will be growing up because you know uh, infrastructures grow when there is trade and this trade will help to boost the infrastructure the economy the uh, everything that lies in between okay so i guess uh, here not only the farmers are being helped but also they are encouraged and their uh, the net uh, net in uh, the, the the net uh, profit that, uh, that they have been uh, receiving will be increased now the second thing is uh, uh, the that uh, the uh, the gst division now we must understand this thing very uh, very simply that uh, the government has uh, is not abolishing the previous system we have just introduced a parallel system which is all uh, which is already present with the previous system and this will help uh, the previous system to be more flexible this will help the new system to be more flexible to be more facilitative to the uh, to the producer uh, so this will again it is going to help help the farmers now when the farmers are be helped now again uh, as per the niti ayog uh, as per the niti ayog uh, last 2015 results uh, most of the msps have been uh, paid out in 67% to the farmers okay in the in the in in later or uh, later one month so now what happens in this mean period the farmers are left with nothing to uh, nothing uh, nothing to themselves now with this new act we have amended that only uh, like within the 3 days of purchase you must have to pay now again you you can see that again the farmers are being helped so i i don't see how this is very contradictory because we have again and again stated this is a parallel system we are not going to abolish anything that was present from the previous time okay so i guess this will again help the farmers in a new different way right the worker uh, so is that your points are those your yeah that yeah right very well formulated divakar uh, uh, shots said again that uh, it says divakar says that farmers will be empowered farmers will be encouraged if there is a drought in rajasthan farmers from the other states can pitch in and help the farmers in rajasthan which was not a, a feasible way to do it in the earlier system because they had to pay a lot of taxes with the inter inter and intra state trade being allowed by the bill uh, i guess divakar was you know uh, pointing out to that fact and about uh, the new infrastructure that uh, with new trade comes up new infrastructure uh, good points uh, i guess uh, uh, some of the panelists will agree with it some of the panelists will not uh, uh, jot down your points uh, my esteemed colleagues uh, so uh, we'll get the next panelist uh, on the dais which is mr rohan uh, rohan got 3 minutes on the clock make them count go you are muted rohan you are muted yeah so my first point would be unlike or un the common belief i would say the main stakeholders in the entire this chain the supply chain or the economic supply chain are the state governments apmc's come under state governments mandis come under state governments now to say central government who has been kind of the secondary buyer for such a long time is currently pitching itself as the primary or i would say in the sense like the in the word le masiha it is pitching itself as a masiha so now i don't see how you cutting the supply or the income for their primary supply, uh, primary uh, buyer that is the state government would help the farmers now second point the number of small farmers like small farmers outnumber big farmers and my colleague somya basu has said that now the moment you are saying it is a free market yes it is a free market but do you expect 80% of that people who are in direct with mandi people who are in direct with apmcs and they are benefiting from that not to say apmcs are exploiting them they are getting benefited as well 
will they are they in a position to go to a corporate or go to an open market and say okay yes on paper it is good like they can demand the price on paper they can demand but tell me one thing can they really do are they in a position to do that now if you're talking about a farmer which owns maybe let's say five acres of land and if he approaches a corporate like say buy my product what would corporate do why would corporate hire him corporate if corporate has an option to go for the big fish in the market why would corporate invest in that person the only reason corporate would go for small farmers is if uh, the corporate finds a good deal out of out of that like if corporate says lose your sovereignty and do what i say it would go for that and now there is also one more thing msp regarding msp msp even till date it is not mandated it is a provision but it is not a mandate no one not a single entity is mandated to pay the msp what fci does is that it asks farmers if you are not able to sell anywhere we are there for you that has been the role of central government for the 70 years after the independence like if no one is buying i am there for you and i will buy at msp which i will set okay this is the thing no one in this entire chain is mandated for msp not even the corporates not even the mandis don't get me wrong even mandis are not mandated for the msp they say there is their provision they follow that there is a convention and they follow that but they are not mandated to do that and as far as the rajasthan drought and up thing is concerned i thought of doing this in rebuttal round but just to make my point pretty clear fci's are there for that fci go downs having overflowing in in this covid times as well fci is there for that so you can't you can't say that okay uh, farmers would do, they would be able to do such and such things despite the systems despite proper systems in place it means that it is a system failure like if you have a proper system in place and still you are uh, what do you say if you are promoting okay this is the new system which is okay then it means there is a Probably major snag in your system okay let's and let's wrap it up over msp okay so this was my point in short and, okay yeah okay makes sense ron a lot of lot of points uh, very 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 uh, strong points uh, one of the primary points that everyone should take note of msp is not mandated which is very mandatory very very correct um, rohan says that the apmc is not extorting the farmers however the government has a different narrative about it and uh, i guess uh, our panelists will have different narratives about it and then one of the greatest points which uh, rohan pointed out is that uh, the center is trying to be the messiah which i guess uh, some some of our panelists will uh, will agree with and some will not and uh, again rohan is going to uh, has pointed out that it will the plight of the farmers if they go to the corporates uh, and will they will be extorted more there anyways uh, very very uh, cons- uh, good uh, very very good points very consolidated consolidated points having said that we have got all the la- our last panelist on, uh, on for this uh, uh, for this session uh, uh, manish the floor is yours you have got 3 minutes uh, make it count your time is start- your time starts now okay so uh, there has been a lot of confusion between this right? so let me make two points very clear for everyone uh, mandis will continue msp or the government procurement will continue now some fun facts for everyone how many farmers are getting benefited by the msp it's only 6% i'll come later uh, like who are those 6% people and uh, how many mandis are there in the entire nation there are around 7000 or 7100 mandis also now according to the farmers commissions of india they clearly stated that for this apmcs or mandi system to get effective or this system to be effective there should be a mandi in each 5 km 5 square km of india now there are regions like meghalaya and other regions who have just one mandis in a region of 11000 square km so this entire mandi system is itself in the now coming to the uh, cartel uh, the cartel formation as uh, by friend some is so uh, aren't their cartel formation still exist yes they exist they exist in the forms of traders it is the traders who decide 
the quantity which they want to buy, the price in which they want to buy. Uh, are they setting the price close to MSP? No, the prices are even 50% less than MSP. And that is how the traders fix their prices. And that is how they buy from the farmers. Now coming to the small farmers, the small farmers couldn't even afford the transportations to the APMCs. Imagine a region like Meghalaya where a small farmer has to go to a Monday. Will he afford uh, uh, transportation cost just transporting 100 kilos of wheat? No, they won't. So what he will do is he will sell it to the rich grocer or the sahukars in around his area and thus get benefited. These systems do exist now, but yes, now they will be found in a large area. This is this like this bill will uh, actually benefit these farmers who even cannot go to the mandis and sell their products. Uh, uh, so second point uh, that I would like to uh, come to is about the uh, uh, sorry. Uh, is about the contract farming. Uh, so, what this which or the uh, retailers or this McDonald's kind of company will do? Will they uh, take contracts from each small farmers? No, they generally hire the entire village. Now, I am so sure about these points because I belong to a family where most of the people are. So, what they does is they take the entire village in the contract farming. And thus, uh, the small farmers are also covered in that. They get their minimum prices, and, and uh, most probably they don't have to bear the cost of the transportation as well. So, two things uh, from which uh, the farmers are getting benefited from this bill is uh, the small farmers will be able to sell it to anyone without giving a cut to the mandis. Right? So, that amount, sorry, is the time up? Now, you have got 10 seconds to wrap it up. 10 seconds to wrap it up. So this is how the small farmers and basically the big farmers will get benefited from it. The APMCs will continue, the MSPs or the procurement will continue and those six farmers, the six percent farmers are basically the rich farmers with some kind of connections who are only able to sell at the MSPs to the government. That's absolutely, absolutely amazing points, uh, very well researched points. Uh, I see that Manish has taken a cue from Soumya's research background and taken the geographical <laughs> locations into the consideration. Obviously, it was written in the Swaminathan committee uh, that the, MS, the Mandis were there in every 480 kilometers, which should be there within 5 to 80 kilometers in a region. And uh, the transportation is a problem at this point of time. That is also a fact. So we... Uh, have uh, got some amazing facts and figures about this uh, about this bill or act per se because it has been signed by the president of India. Also, one of the uh, points that Manish pointed out was the cartelization, which is there, uh, uh, which which the government speculates is there. So we have got a lot of points which are for the motion because they uh, the points say that this, these are actually benefiting the farmers and. And uh, there are a lot of points which say is that this is not benefiting the farmers. So to settle this debate once and for all on this bill or act per se, we'll, we'll open the floor for rebuttals. Uh, so the floor will be open for three minutes. Um, guys, you need to raise your hands. We'll identify, we'll try to take four questions, one from each. And uh, we'll try to keep it crisp and short. Uh, does that make sense? Uh, give me a thumbs up if it makes sense. Right. So we'll open the we'll open the floor. Uh, raise your hands. We'll identify, and uh, then you can go. Your time starts now. Rohan. Rohan has already raised his hand. Yeah. Yeah. So my uh, my rebuttal would be to my esteemed colleague, Mr. Manish. He clearly said, like with the system in place, there are many farmers who can't even go to uh, Mondays right now with uh, the current system. Now, I want to know if they are not well equipped to go to Monday, how are they well equipped to approach the corporates? Now, I, I before I open to them, I have a okay, case. Sorry, for the milk corporate. Repeat the last question. I, I couldn't hear it. I couldn't hear it. No, no, he please. said that uh, if they I cannot another, go to Monday, how will they go to the corporates? Yeah, and I have another thing to add to that. Amul, in terms of milk cooperatives and KRBL in terms of rice production, they are like doing a good business. They are kind of what, what you said, like contra, take, taking 
uh, a complete area into account and they they have contacted them we'll give it a short, short and press come on come on this norm is like open yeah yeah if if this norm is open will krbl or amul be tending to pay the, that much only what they are paying now or will they be getting a, a, the same at the cheaper prices so that is my question i think i'm clear question well posed sure i'm fine to manish uh, your response to it yeah uh, sure rohan thank you for bringing those questions so first thing and the like the first answer to your question is very simple farmers will not have to go to the corporates corporates will come to the farmers if your question would have been about the redressal system i would have agreed that there are flaws in the grievances redressal systems but it is the corporates which will come to the farmers make contracts uh, bear all the transportation costs according to the uh, uh, contracts for whatever they are signing and hence the farmer has uh, doesn't have to go anywhere uh, second question uh, i couldn't understand it clearly but uh, since you have given the uh, example of amul let me make it very clear so what amul has done it has united the dairy farms it has given a same price to all the farmers in the entire region in, in the region that it covers there has been no single complaints where the farmers have come and complained that we have been paying less than the national average so this is what amul has done and yes some some uh, similar kind of case needs to be done in this system too where we have to unite the farmers we have to tell them what what are the prices of their crops and to whom and how to sell their uh, crops i guess the question is answered i guess the question answered no follow ups rohan thank you yeah no uh, follow ups uh, divakar okay so i have a question uh, for both uh, basu or rohan whoever thinks can uh, give me an answer on that yes. see you have stated you both have stated in your statements uh, that uh, uh, divakar you need to point your question to someone point out okay let's uh, let's point it point it out to basu uh, so uh, the 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 major concern that i'm uh, feeling out in your uh, statements in even in your opening statement then in your follow up statement you in the first statement said uh, that there cannot be one system for the whole country i do not i do not understand what 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 do you exactly uh, try, what are you exactly trying to say your first thing the second thing that you said is uh, state uh, like state uh, state is not being benefited now uh, those two are very uh, contradictory statements for me because uh, because for me india is one and there can be one rule for the whole country first second thing uh, definitely the states are being benefited because it's not only giving them uh, a new chance for improving their infrastructure but also they are giving the uh, giving their farmers a chance to explore the market outside their own world so how do you uh, how do you uh, explain these two points that there cannot be one system for the whole country and the states are not question being benefited framed. question framed question framed framed basu your response Uh, so you answer uh, you will understand when i discuss the essential commodities act in the in the the, the first question of yours on um, the second question is essentially the state is not being benefited how uh, and let's 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 face the very basic fact number one uh, for example when you state stated that if rajasthan has a drought some farmers from if rajasthan has a drought some farmers from up can come and sell it to rajasthan which means the farmers of rajasthan are still not getting the money that's the first thing now the second thing is uh here uh, how are the state not getting infrastructure uh, of course they are not getting the infrastructure because government loses an entire control in a free market that is why it's called a free market otherwise it's the communist market like like that in a in in china so if it's a free market free means no governmental in- interference which means the revenue which al- always comes which already comes from the mandi and the apmc are not going to come anymore they are the entire profits are going to be backed by the corporates here fine i'm absolutely fine with that even now here's the here's the ultimate rebuttal which is uh, to the entire point here that if the corporates do even go up uh, the this is to the four stance at bali uh, if the corporates do even go uh, to the farmers uh, how many mcdonald uh, executives know farmers in meghalaya uh, how many farmers do they know in meghalaya i'm sure it's zero and if it's zero the middlemen always do come into play because they will be the one to bridge the the contractors to the farmers 
to the small farmers and specifically when we are talking about small farmers how many small farmers do corporates know zero right well so I guess the answer is they have very well, very well pointed out as the Rajasthan farmers are still not getting the money out of the drought, and the Meghalaya farmers obviously do not have their connections with the McDonalds and the Lays uh, and the corporates and the conglomerates. Uh, do we have any more questions in this dais? Manish, go. Manish. Uh, so my question is to it's short and uh, crisp, and uh, we'll we'll do this in one and a half minutes. We have already uh, got got over the time for about two minutes. Yeah, so very short question. Uh, you mentioned that we shouldn't handle, uh, we shouldn't be handing everything to the corporate. We shouldn't be handing everything to the APMC. Now tell me, uh, if we uh, withdraw these three bills, does this make uh, the life of farmers much easier, or continuing these bills will make their life more worse? This question is directed to. Okay. So, Okay. So let me answer this, and I think I will uh, in the shortest possible way. I don't think the bill should be uh, what do you say taken back, but instead, government can pass one provision, uh, just one provision it can pass, mandate MSP. That's all. End of. And uh, this this entire the quagmire in this which the everyone has landed or gotten themselves into, mandate MSP. That's all. My point Abs mandate MSP. What an answer! What an answer! Absolutely to the point. Mandate means MSP. Uh, I guess uh, what Rohan wants to say is that the government needs to, you know, communicate in a better way and uh, you know mandate MSP such that everybody is pro profited from that. Having said that, uh, do we have any other any other questions on the uh, dais? We'll have one minute left. Uh, just a crisp question and a crisp answer. Right. Does anyone? No. Okay. Okay. Uh, I guess that was a very fruitful session. Yeah, Manish go. I have. I have. I have. Yeah, Sorry. Manish uh, go. So this question is to uh, Somya also. Okay. Uh, so Somya, uh, can you give me a small example or a scenario where you uh, where you can tell me how a small farmer sells his own property? How a small How a small farmer? How How a small farmer sells his produce? How a small small farmer sells his produce? Yeah. Swamiya, go. A trader. Swamiya says a trader. Yeah. Makes sense. Short question, short answer. To the answer. I see Manish is not. <laughs> However, we'll see, take see. this. So I just, uh, I just. Punch there is no follow-up question, or else it should have been the registered. No, no, I'm, I'm unregistered trader. It's no, it's I, not a follow up question, but uh, it's it, I'm just saying that uh, trader is a big word and it is not defined. So yeah. Basu should uh, yeah, clarify so that. I, I guess I guess Basu will be clarifying and will be will be uh, will uh, in our three getting minutes. a clear picture in the next rounds. Yeah, in the in the three minutes of speech, you can bring up the points and you can you know uh, point out to your uh, your esteemed colleagues what you want an answer to. Maybe they will address that in their speech also. Yes. So just say traders, Manish asks how. Absolutely interesting. <laughs> we'll go forward with the second round. The second round is the uh, farmers on price assurance and farm farm services bill, which is uh, empowerment, empowerment and protection, and protection, which is empowerment and protection. I guess this is the bill about the contractual farming we were talking about. Yes. Yes, and I guess most of our panelists have spoken about in the, uh, about this in the previous uh, discussion only. So I guess our speeches will be small, and I think I will our our <laughs> will be more direct, right? So uh, we can do that, and uh, so we'll start. In, 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 let sorry, us, let us start in clockwise direction this time. We'll go with. No, we'll, we'll start it. We'll start it in a zigzag pattern, as in we'll give the first uh, chance to Rohan because Rohan hasn't uh, hasn't got the chance to open the floor. Uh, uh, fine, Rohan. Uh, yeah, totally. So okay. uh, we'll we'll just give you three minutes on the clock. Uh, make it count, and your time starts now. Okay. So this contract farming thing, this this has really come into picture as the thing, the next big thing in the agriculture industry, as far as India is concerned. Be it in terms of FDI, be it in terms of enabling the farmers and what not. As for the government, it basically what not. It is now. I 
I I I'm I'm in line with the government's thinking. What government is doing it? I'm okay. I'm let's say I am agreeing with what government is intending to do. My only concern is: Have you enabled your farmers till date? Have you enabled your farmers to uh, proceed in that, that direction? Have you? Like the first major roadblock which I can see is: How can farmers will be the major player or the bigger player in this? There is no way you can say a farmer will be the stronger player of the two in this equation. Farmer will be, and it has to be the weaker part. It is our who are utter dismay, but and it is quite unfortunate. But it is what it is, and it is that farmer is the weaker player in this trade. Secondly, now you say corporates. You are uh, pulling in the corporates now. With the point of cartelization and oligopoly, it is already existing. In addition to that, currently we have very few companies like KRBL, the the one who produces the rices for India Gate for India. They have contract farming in place. They have their contract farming in place. But now the moment, the moment a market opens for the corporates, like we have to acknowledge that even now, even market for corporates. are that open like we are saying about the farmers that market is not open for farmers right now and it will be open so same way goes for corporates in markets for corporates are also not open and it will be open now say krbl is currently paying uh, the entire contracted way is like 10 rupees per kg i mean i am just taking an arbitrary number with this coming into picture will krbl be paying 10 rupees per kg will it no in no way krbl will be paying that there is no way they will be paying that and this two points are the major roadblocks when it comes to this without enabling the entire ecosystem without enabling your uh, ground reality or uh, improving your ground reality and without enabling your the one the person who actually grows the thing you cannot simply jump into this corporate bandwagon and say this is the real game changer it will be it would have been a game changer if you would have enabled them first and especially given that there is no provision for msp like they are not bound to say uh, say in case of krbl if government is paying okay government says okay our msp for that rice is 6 rupees krbl used to pay 10 rupees a year krbl is now eligible to pay 4 rupees for it so i uh, it's tough to see beyond that so that was my point and i would wrap up with this thing. right thank you very well done very well done rohan rohan has a dig, taken a direct dig on the worker that i see the worker says that the farmers will be empowered by these bills and uh, rohan says that the farmer have to be empowered first and then this bill should be there and uh, uh, but then only this bills uh, the ground reality will be better and the farmers can benefit it, benefit from it another great point that Uh, rohan has put across the dais is basically that the farmers will be uh, the farmers cannot be in in any way with a stronger player uh, between the corporate and the farmers because obviously corporates have more resources uh, very well formulated uh, rohan thank you for your points uh, after this we'll go to uh, mr devakar uh, uh, devakar uh, the floor is open to you uh, you have got 3 minutes make them count your time starts now you are muted devaka yeah so thank you again abhishek so uh, like uh, starting for the empowerment and protection uh, act uh, i would say like uh, because this these, this act has uh, introduced the uh, the policy of contract farming now we must understand what contract is contract is a legal bindation now when we say legal bindation that means who who is the contractor and who is the person uh, on the other side both are liable for the losses both are liable for the uh, profits now how will this help empower the uh, families of the farmers is for example let's say a price has been set and uh, there was some losses now still the farmer will be selling the same uh, same product for the same amount of money even if there is a difference of uh, uh, amounting in the mandi uh, or if there is a difference of amounting anywhere else now still the uh, farmer is getting the profit that he has already decided because he has to decide on what price is he going to sell the produce that he is going to produce right now when he is he himself is setting the uh, pricing of those products 
when he is he himself is going to sell it to the a person that he is recognizing uh, i don't understand how are the farmers being not helped i see that they are the only persons who are being helped in every possible manner now as my esteemed panelists have already stated that at uh, that these bills have uh, uh, in uh, bought in the fdis and what not now let, now when there when when we will get fdis into the system don't you think that the market will be uh, developing in a different manner don't you think that these investment will ultimately lead to a development a development role and pave a way for new developments don't you think it is true because when you say about fdi when you say about investments that means that investments are going to develop even in the future now the last thing is uh, the the last thing that which that this bill says is the huge penalties for the business people who are violating the timelines now this means that uh, whoever whoever the farmer is and whoever is stuck into this this whole system he will still be getting the amount that he has been promised okay now this will help him like for example whatever be the losses that he is incurring but he will still be at a point of attaining some amount which he can not only help to uh, you know uh, which will not only help him to incur the uh, complete the loss section but also you know somehow uh, develop for the future now again we must understand here one thing that is very important uh, that we uh, the government has readily and again stated that in case of any disputes the farmer land will not be seized this is very important to note okay so by this i will uh, end my statement that again the contract farming will again empower the uh, the farmers and this will help the farmers boost their own economy okay uh, is that it very well written uh, research as in i i see divakar has actually read the bells here uh, which have actually <laughs> to be acts now uh, the four major pointers that i find out from his speech were uh, the farmers have decided the price how can they be on the receiving side uh, investment because of fti and that investment help, will help in development penalties to the businessmen who do not comply to the rules and obviously the dispute Uh, will not result into land seizures. Uh, very well documented points. I guess uh, these points can be countered. Uh, may not be countered. Uh, so for that, we'll go to the next person in our panel, uh, Mr. Soumya Basu. Mr. Basu, you have got three minutes uh, on the clock. Uh, make them make them count. Go. I 100 percent agree with Devakar that contract farming definitely empowers farmers. when they are empowered from the beginning when they are legally educated about contracts from the beginning now here's the thing a contract is legally binding but before it becomes legally binding before the people the, the parties sign uh, there is an agreement which is what the bill is uh, an agreement on price assurance so now taking manish's example here that of course that 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 agreement will not be done with will there be 500 million contracts in india no there won't be 500 million contracts the contracts will be done with villages or agricultural unions again my point comes here that within a union there may be 20 small farmers but there is one big farmer the 20 small farmers produce is equal to that one big farmers produce which means the contract or the price that is agreed upon let's say for example for one quintal or one metric ton of potatoes will be agreed upon by that union and when this union is being is is is, is agreeing upon that the small farmers may not have a fail safe which is the msp now we nobody is saying that the msp will stop or whatever but what happens the moment the mandis themselves that their operation costs become more than their revenue which means that all the big farmers will automatically go to contract farming where in effect the moment contract farming comes into play mandis in a matter of 10 years will cease to exist of course they'll cease to exist because the fact is that operation costs will be more than their revenue and this is exactly where the small farmers will not have the fail safe because in 10 years time contract farming will be the only way that they can sell their produce 
This is the first point. The second point is very, very uh, related to my own research. There's a farm service point. Agreement, it's not just price assurance, and everybody will miss this. Even esteemed people in Republic TV will miss this. That is agreement on farm services. What is farm services? Farm, ser farm service, uh, services means quality of goods, which means the farmers are not educated enough to know how a legal document represents agricultural produce quality on paper. There won't be a lawyer in case a contract breach is filed in a district court or in a zila court a farmer will not be able to hire a lawyer forget that forget that let's say the farmer doesn't breach the contract let's say the farmer tries to go and tries to maintain or achieve the quality which means an excessive amount of nutrients will have to be injected into the soil which means the soil quality gets degraded way too quickly under the pressure on the farmer to, main, to uh, reach the quality that has been agreed upon in the contract, which naturally is counterintuitive because farming becomes extremely energy intensive here. And that is not a path of sustainability. There we will be moving away from the path of sus sustainability because there will be some, some portions of India, the um, final point, the geographical uh, uh, parts of India, some portions of India which have much more uh, uh, like better soil, much more nutrient-rich nutrient -rich soil, they'll produce much more and they'll benefit from the contracts then and there. Because why? The farmers can go to any place in, in, in the country and sell their products. The, con the point of connect. Yeah. Right. Uh, I see that Basu has taken a futuristic approach here. Like uh, he is thinking, uh, being, uh, he, he has a vision of like, you know, 10 years down the line, the, the whole scenario will be of contractual farming and uh, no Mondays, and uh, obviously uh, he has uh, emphasis on the point that uh, there is no MSP, no mandate on the MSP, and hence there will be no fail safe for the farmers in case the contracts go haywire. Also, he has also supported the point of Rohan that the farmer needs to be empowered first before this uh, this bill or act actually makes a difference because a lot of farmers here are uneducated, whereas our government says that Hajkal ka hamara kisan uneducated nahi hai. So, anyways. Uh, we have got uh, some 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 uh, absolutely amazing insights from Basu, and uh, which may be uh, a lot based on the facts. And also, he has uh, pointed out on the soil quality again, taking a, a, a hint uh, a hint from his research. So, I guess uh, these are quite good points to be uh, to be taken notes of. Having said that, we have got our floor open again for three minutes. Uh, this time, it's for Manish. Uh, Manish, we have got three minutes. Make them count. Thanks. So I think uh, for this particular amendment of the bill, uh, we all are on the same page. As far as empowerment is concerned, yes, 100%, the government has done a very good job empowering the farmers and letting them sell their products to any of them at uh, at their reasonable price without being uh, without facing the much ups and downs of the market. For example, if the price is agreed on 20 and if the price is decreased to 10, they again get the cost of the 20. Now, when it comes to protection, I rate it as zero. That is because there is no grievance redemption systems presently and which would re listen to the farmers. Uh, let us understand in this way. A corporate is a very big, very big as in it has experts of legal team, right? It, it has financial analysts who can predict the price of the crops. And hence, in this case, the corporates would get benefited. Now, now let us take a scenario uh, where uh, where the corporate doesn't agree or doesn't honor its uh, honor its uh, agreement. For example, if it has uh, promised in twenty five and then it gets in twenty, so the corporate is a big enough and it will have enough amount of power and money to fight this in the court. Whereas the farmers are poor and hardly educated enough and uh, who. And which can be and like those farmers can be misguided easily as they are done now in case of Rahul Gandhi. Also. So yeah, so when it comes to empowerment, I agree is good. And when it comes to protection, there needs to be a stronger grievance system. There needs to be a intermediary body. There needs to be uh, something like stock exchange where farmers can see uh, the future prices uh, of their crops and hence accordingly decide. 
uh, their uh, prices for the produce. That's it. Short. Short and crisp. Short and crisp to the point when he says that about the protection, uh, about the protection aspect of the of the bill or the act, uh, he is not very sure of because. You know, conglomerates and corporates with a lot of resources, analysts may take a lot of uh, advantage of the farmers here because they do have the data which the farmers do not have, and also they do not have a port as a as a perfect grievance redressal system because uh, they do have to go to the sub uh, uh, I get sub district magistrate rather than to the court. So this is one of the uh, flaws that Manish has uh, rightly pointed out. Uh, uh, very well supported by the facts. Uh, I guess all our panelists have read the bill very intently and speculated what what can happen in the future, what is happening in the present. Having said that, uh, uh, I guess uh, we are done with this round, and uh, we'll we'll open this uh, floor for rebuttal session. You can refer to any of the questions you had in the last round. You have any questions in this round? You can refer to any question. Uh, you will be given one question, no uh, read redressal of follow ups. Yeah, no follow ups. So, uh, with a show of hands, uh, go. Divakar. Divakar. Your time starts. Okay, so I have. How much time do I have for this? We have a total window of three minutes, so try to make it crisp. Just make it short and crisp. Yeah. Okay, okay, so I will make it short and crisp. So, like, uh, as uh, all of my friend, fellow uh, friends have said that uh, the, the whole thing, uh, issue about the law thing. Now, what they have forgotten to understand here is that the first level of uh, clearing of these doubts or these whatever is happening is to be done by the district magistrates or SDMs. Now they, they, uh, the the farmers don't have to go directly to a courtroom. Okay, they have the, those issues will be first resolved by the district magistrate of their whole their own district. Okay, so the whole uh, whole concept of uh, this uh, farmers are not educated or farmers are farm, farmers do not know. I don't understand how this comes up. Second thing, most of you have po pointed uh, out Divakar, that Divakar, your question is what is your uh, question, Divakar? No, 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 no I'm not. Your, your question is directed to. It's a statement. No, it's not a question. It's just a rebuttal. Oh, oh, you just want to okay, okay, comment, comment. Come, okay. okay. And and second thing that most of you have pointed out that uh, the there will not be 500 million contracts. Then you must understand this bill again. You must have to understand this bill because this whole bill is about creating 500 million contracts. It's not about creating a single contract. You must understand this. So these are the two things that I must uh, say here, and uh, I will uh, open the floor for other people now. Amazing, makes sense. Short and crisp. Uh, go if if Manish. if if. Uh, show of hands. Show of hands. Statement. Show of hands. Statement. Statement. Uh, uh, Manish has uh, raised his hand first. I'll uh, go with Manish and then Somya. Go, Manish. So questions, very uh, short questions to Devakar. Uh, Devakar, uh, what are the primary duties of sub district magistrate, and how many farmers on an average are there in a district? That's it. Okay. Uh, okay. So, Manish, uh, to, uh, to answer your question, it's very simple. Like, even if you take the example of Gorakhpur, my own district, there uh, there are close to uh, five million farmers, and uh, and the primary and 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 if you see the condition of Gorakhpur, uh, almost uh, five hundred people meet the district magistrate as farmers every day, and this has been uh, so. Th this is the thing that the state must imply with their district magistrates and sub district magistrates. Now, if, if your political leader is not implying something to their district magistrates, it's not the duty of the center. It's the duty of the state. Clearly glorifying Mr. Yogi Adityanath here. We'll go <laughs> to Samya now. Uh, it is, of, of course, it's very easy to say that the center doesn't have a duty here, but we are talking about the lives and their... It's a matter of them being alive or not. So that's the thing. So uh, on, on, on this note... If there are 500 million contracts, we know how efficient our judi judicial system is, and we definitely know how efficient our government employees are. If one breach, if, if, um, if, if even if I'm seeing that there's a 1% breach in 500 million, that is 5 million breaches in a year, which won't be addressed. Just, it won't be addressed. And since it won't be addressed, that's it. Now, here I will also have a sort of question to Rohan, where Rohan can also uh, give a statement. The question is, uh, Rohan, that since it is already an act, 
how do you think that, uh, that 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 farmers can actually be empowered to know what a contract is? Yes, they are educated, but they are not educated enough to know what a contract is right now, or rather, even communities of farmers. So, how do you think that this can be actually carried forward as an act, uh, how, as in the implementation portion? Uh, yeah. Okay. Next, Chris Rohan has given me opportunity. Yeah. May I go? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this has given me an opportunity to throw some light on my very favorite topic regarding this, and that is the optics of this government. There is a disconnect between this government and its audience. Like you have to reach out. There has to be a reach out program. You have to address them. You you cannot if there are raging uh, protests, then burning their tractors. You cannot go and say no, no. These guys are misleading you, and we are helping you. No, there has to be connect. You there has to be reach out. You need to reach out to them. Now, what we are seeing in this case is there is a total disconnect to an extent that the oldest ally of this government has left the alliance. Now, there there has there are systems in place. We we have I mean we even had we have. AIDS uh, campaign in place. Like we have Rapa. gone through the, this. The central Rapa. government has gone to each villages to awareness. Why can't do that? It Rapa. must do that. And we clearly rebutting the protesters is the most ridiculous thing this government has done till now in this respect. Yeah. Okay. 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 Uh, quite di- quite direct answers. Uh, this connect between the government and the audience. Sri Shiromani Akali Dal leaving the government. Uh, very valid points made. I guess we'll have a question from Manish. Manish, go. So, yeah, so basically, it's a statement. Okay, last statement, Manish. Short and crisp. Okay, so, uh, so Devaka, uh, coming to the subdistrict magistrate, uh, let me give you a very simple scenario. Every day outside the subdistrict uh, magistrate office, there are five hundred people waiting, and they are not farmers. And let us make this very clear that when we are talking about farmers, we are talking about the top contributors towards GDP. This GDP would have been minus thirty or minor around minus twenty nine percent, if not farmers. And coming back to Rohan's point about Shiromani Akali Dal leaving the alliance, then let me tell you, uh, Rohan, the same government supported in July. June or July around that time, but when this came to Parliament and when they saw this protest by the farmers, they decided to leave it because of their own political advantage. There is nothing related to the bill or the protest uh, that that made the SAD leave the NDA. That's amazing, amazing. Very well formulated answer. This is a perfect example how you can use a rebuttal a statement to answer two of your opponents or two of your colleagues per se. Uh, thank you, Manish, for your statement. Very short, very crisp. Having said that, uh, so this is the last uh, leg of our uh, uh, episode, which is basically the, the last bill that we'll be discussing, which is the Essential Commodities Amendment Bill 2020. Uh, so we'll go again in a zigzag way. Uh, I guess the worker has not had the chance to open the debate. So the worker, you will have 30 sec, uh, three minutes on your uh, on your clock, and uh, make them count. Your time starts now. Okay, so uh, let's uh, let's start about the essential commodities amendment bill. What uh, like before I start everything, uh, everything else, I uh, we must understand one thing that we are one country and there can be one law for the whole country. Yes. Second thing, uh, second thing is that uh, uh, whenever a government makes a law, it is not for a a, a singular community of people or set of really uh, region of people. It is for the whole country. It is it is for the benefit of every person from north to south, from east to west. So we must understand that everyone have to be uh, have to be if uh, have to be benefited by the laws that we are making. Okay, so now uh, what essential commodities amendment bill uh, will do to the uh, to the system is like it will ch- it will keep a check on the inflation rates uh, because because you know uh, because now the market is in better reach for the uh, to the farmers now farmers because the farmers are putting everything of their own they have their own prices they have everything of their own even government is uh, you know uh, encouraging them to uh, keep stocks of their own now this will not only uh, this will help the help to boost the economy of farmers okay uh, let's let's talk on the very basic level 
Now, the second thing that what this uh, bill has done is to remove some of the essential commodities so that we can uh, invest into a more uh, flexible future. Okay, now like previously, what used to happen? People used to stock mm -hmm. potatoes and tomatoes and onions and pulses and everything else, so that the price would go up. Now, what uh, now what uh, we have done is uh, now what uh, the government has done in this bill is to remove these uh, these items from the co com essential commodities, so that uh, even if someone is stocking. Or even if the market is in a surplus or some down, the uh, the uh, the net price of these commodities don't go very high. Okay, now because the storage limit has been li uh, has been uh, removed, so there is no uh, storage uh, limit now. Everyone uh, like. At, at any point of time, the storage capacity can be increased so that if uh, because there there are uh, regular forecasts of things. Okay, there are regular forecasts of uh, uh, droughts. There are regular for forecasts of cyclones. There are regular forecasts of everything else. So based on the forecast, we can stock up these things at a, a definite place and at the time of need, we can uh, open the supply line and we can. Uh, we can uh, we can get benefit that particular area now along with this uh, along with this the government is regularly uh, investing upon the infrastructure to store goods okay till now we had only fdi fdi's uh, storage houses but now uh, like even in kolkata and uh, in chennai there are new walls that are being made so that we can not only accommodate a more larger amount of uh, uh, products but also we can facilitate uh, storage easy so i guess this will again this is again going to help the farmers in a very beneficial in a very robust way okay uh, i guess that's the end of the uh, of the argument uh, very well uh, drafted out points that it will check on inflation stocks will boost the economy of farmers as uh, the government has the vision of increasing the uh, income of farmer by twice uh, commodities stocking of the, of the commodities will not fluctuate the prices very well documented i guess uh, uh, people will have different points uh, corresponding to this for that we'll go to our next panelist the dais is open for mr somya basu for 3 minutes and uh, basu you have got 3 minutes on the clock and your time starts now so the essential commodities act is the the amendment is the death knell in this entire fiasco and uh, let's start with this uh, the essential commodities act of 1955 was uh, was 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 brought in why because the britishers ensured that hoarding is something which is followed throughout india to remove the 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 scenario of hoarding by virtue of which artificial demand can be created in the market uh, can be removed entirely so contrary to what uh, uh, like my friend divakar said right now that the essential commodities act will in fact create artificial demand to begin with and how is artificial demand created here because the corporates buying from the farmers because the farmers can move out of their place to sell which is the previous two bills and now the corporates can buy in a huge amount from the farmers let's say all of that is not sold in a year let's say a contract is finished now they already have an enormous stock because they have hoarded and when they have that enormous stock now that they have hoarded now the next season when a fresh contract is made so this is how these two bills come into play together when a fresh contract is made now they can say that this will be the price which which can be 50% less than the previous contract and the farmer can't say anything why because 10 years down the line i said that the mandi and the apmc will all already be almost non functional so this is where the prices can be controlled you cannot have a free market on life essentials let's bring this here what did the essential commodities act entail here the price of sanitizers in march went up to 399 rupees for a 50 ml bottle masks and sanitizers were bought brought into Uh, the the um, the list of essential commodities for april may and june uh, post june they were um, they ceased to exist as that so their prices naturally came down because the fact is nobody can hold it that is what an essential commodity is so if you are holding 
daily essentials, the farmers, of course, they might be benefited here, but you and I are being taken to the grave here because artificial demand is being created. And the ridiculousness of this bill is where my pan-India thing comes. Why is Haryana and Punjab protesting here? Because the fact is the growth rate of crops in different regions of India is different, which means the hoarding will affect different people differently based on the produce. And the price fluctuation, according to this bill, for non-perishable goods is supposed to be more than 50% when they will be brought into an essential commodity again. And for onions and potatoes, 100%? Twice the amount of price. What is the is is it is is it Russian roulette that the government is playing that randomly when the price increases more than fifty percent, more than hundred percent, they'll come into play again. Another provision of this bill. I'll give me twenty seconds. Another provision of this bill is they will also bring them into the essential commodity when in the case of war, famine, natural calamities. Natural calamities and famine hit. India differently, different places differently. So this is my point entirely, that this bill is not fruitful for different places because they have different growing conditions. And the contract period is also not mentioned in the, very, in, in, in the previous bill. So the contracts can expire and the fresh contract can drive both the small farmers and us to the ground beyond our graves, doesn't matter whatever the hell it is. And retail price, who sets retail price right now? So 50 percent, 100 percent. Right, right, right. Uh, uh, very well directed shots here and uh, <laughs> points very well uh, noted as in the enormous hoarding will actually increase the black marketing and uh, will, will uh, create a fluctuation in the price and uh, uh, very well, uh, very well pointed out that it will be a, a grave point, a grave uh, decision on the part of the consumers uh, per se which is us, us and also uh, contradicting to the point of the water as in one India, one rule, Swamya says that Euro India has a huge diversity. We cannot have that different places are being affected by different things and different scenarios. Having said that, uh, let's go to our next panelist, Mr. Manish Sharma Watts, uh, for his arguments and his points. Uh, the floor is open for you, Manish, for three minutes. Uh, you have about three minutes on the clock, make it make them count. Go. Thanks, Abhishek. Uh, so to understand this, let us go around 50 to 60 years back. So at that time, India had scarcity of food. There were people were starving, there were no food. So food, all these cereals from America or US used to come, and then it was directly used to go into the markets or the process. Now, come back to today's scenario. We have surplus of food. There is this reverse condition. And let me give you some stats. Around 400 lakh metric tons of wheat, around 200 lakhs of sugar, around some metric lakhs of rice is being wasted. Why? Because we don't have infrastructure. Now, let, now tell me one thing. Why would a private company would invest in infrastructure, cold houses, warehouses, when there is a limit in the stocks? You cannot own simply because if you own, you will go to jail. It is illegal. Why would a company invest in the warehouses? Now, this bill gives them the right to build infrastructure, buy the goods, and store it in case of any calamities or whenever they feel like taking off the market. So, this is basically directed to the FTX. Again, increasing the economy of the country. This is what the government says. Now, uh, now uh, on my personal stance, uh, I would uh, just uh, say one word personal. It is a waste. It's a complete waste as if it just promotes black market. We don't need to understand uh, demand and supply for this. Let us understand this by a very simple example. Onions today harvested are at 20 rupees kg. Take it and, and, and onions is used in every household of India, across India. Everybody eats. Take it, hold it. Now the prices goes up around 50 to 100 and we have seen that it happens. Now take it out of the warehouses or the cold uh, warehouse stores and distribute it to the people in 100 kg who are at loss. We, the consumers and the farmers who are getting benefited, these farmers. 
So this bill, according to me, is a wastage and only promotes black marketing. That's it. Seems like Manish has his points aligned to that of Swamyas. He says that it does promote black marketing. But if I am not wrong, Manish, you also say that because of this bill, there will be a huge investment in the areas of infrastructure of warehouses, uh, infrastructure bu building of warehouses and storage units. Uh, did I get that right? Uh, yes, Abhishek. So my point was basically to say that what the government says and okay. what will be the actual scenario after few years. Now, uh, let us understand in this way. Yeah. So there will be this fruitful fruitfulness uh, for few years. And again, after few, few years, as Sonia mentioned, there will be black market. Okay, 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 makes sense, makes sense. This is what the government says, this is what we think, this is why we debate. Uh, so for the next, uh, for the next round, round of uh, uh, logical points, we'll go to Mr. Rohan here. Uh, yeah, Manish. Okay, uh, so we'll go to Mr. Rohan here. Uh, you have three minutes on the clock. Uh, your time starts now. Uh, make them count. First thing first, I find my points very much aligned to what my two colleagues, Mr. Soumya Basu and Mr. Manish, just said. And so let, let's see it this way. You are bringing corporates. They are setting up the entire infrastructure. Now. Till now, well and good. You are doing the job. The moment they start utilizing that infrastructure, we are at loss. I mean, that, that is the final nail in the coffin. Now, government has made its point very clear, like, okay, they are the Masiha, they are pro-corporates and all. But tell me one thing. They have, recently, they have imposed an export ban on onions. They have removed items like cereals, onions and potatoes uh, from away from, moved away from the essential commodity list. My concern is, this government is not clear as to what it wants to do. We sitting here, we can say this bill is, I mean, this was the worst that government could have done. But government obviously doesn't agree, but its action doesn't seem to disagree as well. Like, I, I'm struggling to figure out what government is trying to do. It, it is saying, okay, we are promoting... Uh, the corporates we are promoting or uh, the privatization and all the, everything would be good actually then will be on its way which is still on its way that is a, that is another discussion but through its action what are the optics that this government has both i mean you are saying okay we will hold that and it, is, it obviously it will be a black marketing like it, it, it will be a hub it will be a abode of black marketing and what are you doing? You are just complimenting it. I just fail to understand how this bill. Why is why is this bill? I'm not here to make my point across. My colleagues have made the point pretty clear. So I'm I'm not there. I'm, I'm I'm not defending anything. I'm just I have on a personal level. I have failed to understand this bill in its conceiving nature, like the way it has been conceived. I have failed to understand. Sorry, being a part of the debate, I shouldn't be saying that. But <laughs> since my fellow colleagues have made their points pretty clear and I have said uh, my points are in line with them. And on a personal note, I, I just can't find what government is like. Why? What is there for government in this other than this crony capitalism? Makes sense. Makes sense. And th th that's basically my point. I mean, I wish I could have said more, but I don't right. know if right. I would right. be able to make a unique point or not. So that's right. all. Right. Uh, <laughs> it seems like Rohan, Rohan is quite aligned with Mr. Manish and Basu here. Uh, says that it's pro-capitalism, pro-corporate, nothing for the farmers. Uh, is, uh, end users are, are going to be gravely uh, you know, uh, affected by this bill. Uh, black marketing will, uh, will, will be on a search by this bill. Uh, a lot of points, a lot of facts, a lot of figures makes a lot of sense. Uh, uh, after this, uh, I see that our discussion about this bill uh, has reached a valid conclusion. Not reached a valid conclusion. We do have some contradicting points because Mr. Divakar is already smiling there. He has got a lot of questions posed. Uh, 
I guess he is the only one in this uh, in this in this panel who is uh, this pro bill. So I'll open the floor for rebuttal. Uh, you will be given three minutes. Uh, by the raise of your hands, just let us know uh, who wants to go. Okay, I see Divakar. He was smiling. I'll let him go first. Divakar, time starts now. Make it short and crisp. Okay, so uh, like I just want to clarify a few things here. Uh, so, so that uh, the point that was made by Rohan that is very uh, very legit. That there is a uh, there is a big disconnect between the government and the people. Yes, that is very true. That that I also personally found uh, find in in the past few uh, few uh, days or few months that I have been seeing this government. There is a very big disconnect. I do agree with that, but then uh, everyone has a problem, and we uh, we as a government are there to full to provide a solution for those problems. If we continue to uh, you know count problems, there is no end to counting problems. See, this bill is basically to provide a solution for all the problems. There are n number of problems. There are n number of solutions, but we have to work towards the direction of n number of solutions, not to, towards the direction of n number of problems. Then the th the, the 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 very big thing that has been uh, stated by everyone that uh, there will be black marketing after a few years of time. Then I would like to ask everyone, uh, what is law and order for? We make a law so that something can be restricted, not not because that after few years of times uh, that law is meant to be broken. No, that that is the whole uh, that is the whole legislation of making a law. Excellent. You are just just you are sitting there and just saying that after few years uh, we will uh, there, we will be seeing black marketing, black marketing. Let's first wait and see how this crops out. you have already decided no this will happen and for the last thing is uh, like you know if 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 you see from 1990 to 2000 to 2020 there is a time. yeah yeah just last uh, just last <laughs> but in between 1990 and 2020 there is a 30 30 year gap okay and if you see that uh, the farmers income have just increased by a percent of 21% okay now if you see the same increase in in the payment of teachers or government officials that is close to 200% so by this bill we are giving the power to the farmers that that everyone has to understand we are providing the solutions we are not counting the problems makes sense i can see everyone ready to pounce on it yeah i have seen first manish was raising his hand and then rohan and then swami i will go in this order manish go yes Okay, so very simple question. First, a small statement uh, regarding the law and order that you have mentioned. So we all know how law and order works in India from almost seventy years. So no comments on that. Second question, uh, you said uh, uh, this bill will help the farmers economically, and I'm quoting you exactly that the farmers will be benefited economically. Now I'm very poor in understanding the amendments of the bill and all. Can you give me a short and crisp example of how? A small farmer or a big farmer will help. Will be help economically. Yeah. We'll come back to you, Devaka. We'll come back to you, Devaka. You just note that. So we'll get get to you at the end of this TV. Uh, this report. Go, Rohan. Yeah. So uh, my colleague, Mr. Devaka, just said the uh, laws are there in place, and <laughs> all welfare is of utmost. There are two more things in place. Parliamentary committee. <laughs> I think we, as a citizen, we have totally forgotten. It is a part of parliament. Parliamentary committee is supposed to review the bill. And second thing, voting on the parliament, the major, the basic essence of a bill being an act, the voting, like the not not the voice voting and say who are in favor. the proper voting system the way bills are passed you cannot pass a bill as a resolution and say this is for the welfare of the people and rest like 150 to 120 people are against this and we so we won't be doing that and since the same bunch of people are against this as well we won't be putting it Uh, through parliamentary committee statement well made so, statement well made rohan uh, i think uh, our fellow colleagues to understand this will come back to you divakar i know you are bubbling with the answers yeah come <laughs> here go yeah. so uh, they will go to jail law and order is fine that was the law before the amendment 
yeah. when you when, when you remove it from the essential commodities list it does not remain a law you can hold it and no law and order won't come into play there because the free market will come into play there that's the first thing uh and the second thing which is perhaps one of the like like the best thing that rohan said right now about the voting maybe that is exactly the reason why we need a unified not just a unified a strong opposition within the parliament to have discussions the discussions that we are having right now that can be had in the parliament so yeah. right makes sense uh, <laughs> comments very well posed here devakar your responses uh, devakar can you wait for 20 seconds manish go just because this is the last round okay uh, so uh, one thing uh, like i was saying to devakar is devakar uh, when we talk about the hoarding let us understand there is no fixed quantity i can hold up anything and how much i want if i have the money i can build infrastructure and hold the entire nation's stock this is the first thing second thing uh, let us not get into the political ideology let us not uh, say that uh, the opposition is not strong or the government is too strong for that <laughs> let us let us stick to the debate that's it <laughs> <laughs> uh, good digs made there uh, akar your response there you have any okay so yeah 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 i have response for every question so for the first question that uh, that was asked by manish that how farmers will be empowered economically so i will give him his own example about a mool dairy you yourself stated that in the past uh, few years no one has ever reported that they have been uh, given less amount of money or they are uh, not happy with the amount that the mool dairy is paying them so i don't understand what you, what what you haven't understood in the whole question because your whole question has been answered by you yourself okay now second thing is there is uh, that you said is there is no fixed quantity on hoarding yes i do understand I, i do agree with you and yes there are loopholes to every uh, every law and it is up to us that how we can uh, how we can protect those loopholes yes the, see again i have said yes there is disconnect between the people and the government and there will be loopholes yes but then it is again up to us and up to the uh, people of our country that if we see no this uh, if there are loopholes we must and then again uh, yes definitely it's not a political forum but then again the so somya basu's come, uh, point comes into picture that we need a very strong opposition we do need here okay now the third thing that have been uh, pointed out by uh, rohan is that the parliamentary committee must review without review there cannot be a law now uh, uh, again you have answered your your question yourself see a law is made once the parliamentary committee review is review it it and then it is sent to the president then president reviews it again with the help of the uh, his uh, uh, his uh, his colleagues uh, no, they are not colleagues they are called uh, presidential uh, and i don't uh, exactly know the term but then again he discusses it with them and then he signs the bill okay so i don't know where uh, like uh, before making is uh, making this law where was the parliamentary committee and then again uh, the whole uh, whole thing about voting system that have been called out here uh, then you guys must understand what uh, the system of quota uh, quota during the attendance of a parliament and during the voting procedure of a parliament right makes the uh, walker your points do make sense uh, i see rohan uh raising his hand rohan uh, as we do have no follow ups because the debate will not be ending anyway soon i will give you a chance i'll give you just <laughs> 10, 20 seconds make it short and crisp parliamentary uh, committee is part of the recommendation not the bill itself and not the review if the house is divided in terms of the opinion it has to go to parliamentary committee not all the bills are supposed to go to parliamentary committee not all the bills are supposed to be reviewed by parliamentary committee but if both upper and lower house are hung and they are not yet clear in terms of what is going there then the bill should move to parliamentary committee for are we talking yeah, yeah definitely parliamentary, parliamentary committee i do agree and then then again the whole point of a strong opposition comes again i am very sorry but this is very true uh, we need a strong opposition here okay uh, we did get into the political side of the things with the upper houses and the lower houses and the voting how did uh, they go i guess uh, this is the time where we make our closing statements uh, if you could guys uh, do wish make it short and crisp 1 minute 1 uh, and 1/2 minutes 2 minutes 
uh, two minute stops we'll we'll just wrap it up in two minutes we'll go in a counter clockwise as per my screen we'll go with samya basu samya basu go you have got two minutes go if you walk into a random uh, bookstore you would find that there is probably one or two books on newton's laws of gravity and simultaneously if you look the other way you will find that there are 20 to 30 books or at least in a small bookstore on economics so the number of books that are in a uh, in a bookstore is directly proportional to how less we understand something and to not understand economics that much so to naturally assume in a capitalistic environment and where adam smith himself in 1772 came up that division of labor is the basis of capitalism and the capital formation was also argued upon by Karl Marx, the, the, the consequence of the division of labor. To naturally assume that a capitalist player within the market will, 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 will play by fair rules is, is an extremely utopian concept. And that's exactly where the Essential Commodity Act is 100% required on life essentials. See, there will not be a lot of problem with the agricultural trade and produce, considering that farmers can grow and go to different places. There also will not be a problem with contract farming. Yes, there will be, but Mondays also need to be uh, empowered here. So my closing statement essentially says that you need to empower Mondays as well. But when these two bills are combined with the Essential Commodity Act, right, Amendment Act, that is where the recipe of disaster comes in. So the bills, when looked at, looked at through a single lens, is extremely uh, against small farmers, and specifically us. And that is entirely the, the case. So yeah. Very well made. Very well made. Just stop the whole arguments come into this with the closing statement of Samia Basu. We'll go with uh mr rohan uh you have got the floor for two minutes rohan if you could just make it short and crisp i would like to start with uh, the theory called set theory first set a contains the idea of demonetization a terrible idea executed horribly and set b consists of gst a good idea executed in a really bad way and this farm bill is the result which we call it as A intersection B. It can be on paper, it may look good, but the real scenario or the ground situation is a bit different and government seems to be quite aloof with what it is there. And its execution right from the word go is up for a toss. So. This is the gist of all the three bills in con conjunction. One thing what government should do the le at the least and at the earliest is mandate MSP. Most of the concerns will be addressed if MSP is mandated. The third bill that remains to be like it is a black spot, but it really needs to be reworked. And there is no other way of saying that. And let's hope it doesn't turn out to be something like GST or demonetization. Thank you. Very well, very well formulated, amazing facts. Uh, very well uh, formulated into a gist of the whole debate. I will go to the next person, Mr. Divakar Upadhyay. If you have two minutes, make it short and crisp, please. Mm, thank you again. Uh, so, like, uh, I think that this bill, uh, this bill, this bill will come as a boost for the far, for our farmers. And again, as I have stated in the uh, in my first statement, that this is a one step uh, uh, closer to a self reliant India, to a self reliant farmer, to a self reliant oneself. And then, uh, uh, and then we make laws to uh, to address one plus one situations. We don't make laws to address one and one problems. Okay. Now, everyone, uh, like every place, there will be problems. In a family, there is problems, but then it is up to the family members to how to subside the problems and how to proceed uh, for the future. 
Now, the, and then, and then the third, the, the third thing that I must say here is we, uh, the government is trying to place a parallel system. They are not uh, trying to abolish MSPs or they are not trying to abolish uh, the Mandis or the system that has been already prevailing. They are trying to bring in a more robust, more flexible system into the market that can help the farmers. That can, that can help the farmers, that can help the end users, that can help the traders, that can basically that can that will help everyone. Okay, and then uh, I think this law basically promotes one market for whole India. And uh, so by this, I uh, I would I would say that this will not only empower the farmers but also reduce the expenditure of the government resources, which is again a step towards self-reliant India. Thank you. Makes sense. One market, one India, which Divakar has all always been focusing on through the whole debate, and also it's a parallel system, not a system which will abolish the current systems. Uh, very uh, optimistic approach to the whole debate, uh, Divakar. Uh, thank you for your gist of the whole debate. We'll go to Mr. Manish. Uh, Manish, about two minutes. Uh, please make it short and crisp, and your time starts now. Thanks, so, uh, so my final concluding statement is not related to the bills or something else. Uh, it is related to the farmers. So if we talk about farmers, we are talking about the most important and sensitive uh, So when we are talking about farmers, we are talking about the most important and sensitive assets of India. Uh, and let me make it very clear by saying that no government loves farmers. I repeat again, no government has ever loved farmer. There are a lot of things to be improved in this sector, but no government had the guts, including the present one, to do or to make a reform for the farmers. Let me give you some stats proving my statement. Uh, take an example of a government employee. Its salary, if if if, if its salary was uh, rupees one in 1950s or 40s, the salary is 200 rupees now. So there is a two percent, 200 percent increase in the uh, in its revenue, for example, for a president, it is 150%. But when we talk about farmers, it is only 20 to 30%. So that is how the entire country loves farmers. Uh, now coming to the bill, uh, the first two bills make sense. They are revolutionary in kind of thing, but there are loopholes. And let us understand uh, that these are the loopholes from which the farmers are get exploited. And definitely they will. Essentially, if we find a bug in a website, we know how to uh, exploit it. So these loopholes are the similar kind of things from which the farmers will definitely be exploited. There needs to be a proper redressal system. There needs to be a proper uh, redressal to these loopholes uh, from which farmers can get benefited. And when we talk about the stand on oppositions or the current government, they are always divided. Uh, we know this one market, one uh, farming was... Uh, in the uh, manifesto of the Congress itself. They are protesting for the same thing, I don't understand. Really, I don't understand. If they are protesting for these loopholes or, uh, uh, or these bugs in these farm bills, it would make sense. But they are protesting against the entire uh, this farm which does not make any sense because the current one does not benefit. Well, the pointed farmer. out, no government is, the, is a friend of the farmers. Uh, 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 very, very uh, loud statement in itself. Uh, thank you, Manish, for that. Amazingly put. Uh, very well gisted out the whole discussion. I guess uh, with this, uh, with this uh, last closing statement, we are, we are at the end of uh, this uh, fruitful debate. I am absolutely happy with you guys, uh, with, with these esteemed panelists who have made their points very well, well uh, known and very well heard of. And people have a lot of insightful points have come out. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, a lot of insightful points. People are going to benefit it, benefit from it if if, if uh, they watch this uh, debate. And uh, it, uh, the point is that this debate, this this discussions were uh, were you know supported with a lot of with lot of facts and figures. Mm. And absolutely loved it, isn't it, Aman? Absolutely, absolutely. Everyone had their facts well prepared. They were backing their statements. So Amazing. Yeah, very insightful. I'll just go. If anyone wants to understand this bill, this is a nice video. This is, this is, this is the video, you know, this is the debate. We will not promote the video as per, but this is a debate to look into. Because, you know, debate. Yeah, uh, this, is the, this is where you understand the bill. So I would go around my panelists one by one and uh, 
and would like to understand how did they like the debate and what did they like about their panelists and uh, what not uh, i'll go with rohan first okay so first thing i would say like this is the debate that nation should want to know okay <laughs> <laughs> and the range of the varied range of this debate can be if i can sum it in one statement is that there is hardly any place where you you would find a karl marx and set theory and what not being discussed in a absolutely. <laughs> absolutely 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 uh, we'll go with manish next yeah abhishek and amit thanks uh, so witnessing a very civil debate after a lot of time but uh, thank you for making that possible <laughs> uh, so oh, so closing statement for this would be yeah uh, apart from the insights that we brought in on each bill and the overall system uh, uh, there were very few and uh, like there were two very insightful points which even i was not aware in my research so thank you all the panelists for making me aware and uh, this is how we come to know the each flaw the each benefit for every system so i think we should have more this kind of debates on different topics well done thank you absolutely this is our this is our agenda and this is our aim uh, you know where we do not know we, we tend to learn from people who know about those mm-hmm. things and also vice versa the things goes like that we'll go with somia next so one of the uh, things that we began with like we just started talking that one thing which we hate or which we not hate which we are very afraid about modern india is that people are not open to other opinions which are not in in line with their own opinions and when that comes that is where bigotry comes in that that cre- creeps into the society and uh, a forum like this in like big four, four people uh, different ideologies different opinions they're coming understanding uh, trying to understand the other views trying to counter it trying to rebuttal it so yes yeah, so uh that this is this is what, what what is required and and if 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 your channel can have a good reach in in you know in a, in, a, in a few days months years they should know how how people with different opinions talk to each other and that is that is what this example is being set by you guys so kudos kudos congratulations for that thank you somia this is this is very much what we wanted to because people can have different opinions and the, the the only way to understand it to listen to the people because you will get insights from them obviously and it is with your help you you guys as help that we can go and have a better reach uh divakar will go next with you yeah thank you abhishek once again for inviting us all uh, especially inviting uh, so you know because uh, meeting you all again for uh, after a long time it really excites me again again you know uh, uh, after a long time we have been debating so uh, like like it's a it's a very good thing because i believe in debate as a process where you try to consult someone on your views or you try to get yourself consulted on the views of others and which is a very good thing because if, i think it, it it not only increases your knowledge about the thing but also helps you understand how uh, how things work and how can we help into the whole system to make it a beautiful uh, beautiful thing out so i guess this is a really great initiative and uh, yeah thank you again for uh, you know having us here thank you thank you divakar uh, this is this is what, what our insight was we would, uh, we collectively would want to be a part of a solution here not a part of the problem and solution only comes when we discuss about things not you know uh, argue about things that's that's our fund isn't it absolutely we need to discuss we need to learn from each other rather than disagree and shouting on each other right with this uh, we do come to the end of uh, this episode thank you guys thank you so much for being a part of this whole discussion so this is an initiative from for, from from my side and aman side to you know stop the uh, facebook uh, commenting war as in being keyboard war yes. just randomly writing anything and everything in social media outreach yeah without any context uh, so this gives us a lot of context because we have a streamlined discussions here so anyway uh, i guess uh, i hope that our agenda succeeds in the recent future and i hope 
to see you guys uh, again in a panel i hope you guys also want to come back again on a panel like this and debate it out thank you so much guys have a good night uh, enjoy kudos bye bye yeah guys. thank you guys thank you once again <laughs> bye bye